Well, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. <laughs> a few, um, yes, it, it was a surprise to me that even, even we sort of, when we get in control of new territory, this is also a male territory, but we can get back to that. The first thing I thought about was, uh, was actually a, a TV series, Borgen. It aired a, a quite a couple of years ago, and uh, it was about the Danish uh, government choosing a European commissioner uh, with the famous tagline from the movie Alien. Uh, the title uh, was, in Brussels, no one can hear you scream. Uh, the idea was, of course, that as in space, in Brussels, it's so distant from people's everyday experience that nothing you do really makes a difference. But in my five years in Brussels, as a European commissioner, I think that has proved all doubts that this is definitely not true. Because Brussels, or rather, the European part of our democracy, is when it's working, synchronize with business and national governments and civil society, well, then it plays a vital part of European success. I'm looking very much forward to these new responsibilities. Uh, I'm looking forward to get to know you. I'm looking forward to learn a lot. I'm looking forward to with you uh, do exactly as what it says uh, on this conference. It's a new decade. We have global ambitions. Uh, one of the things I do know, though, from previous life, is first, that space is endlessly fascinating. Second, that whatever is in space is relevant here on the planet. And thirdly, it takes money. Otherwise, nothing's going to happen. But even with these three things in common, there are a number of things that we need to do in order to have real effects. And this is why it's so important that you all choose to come together here to take the effort, to use the time, because here we can build the networks that allows us to provide the conditions and the support that all the innovative companies in Europe need to be able to start, to thrive, to develop, to scale up, to have global impact. And we can support hugely ambitious projects like the Galileo satellite system and the Copernicus Earth Observation Program and we can defend a level playing field in Europe and across the world. And we can work together to help the European industry together to innovate. Because we have not fulfilled our potential. We have more to do and we can do better. And it's probably true that no industry but the space industry holds so much potential and strategic uh, importance. Because it is true about space, as it is about the European democracy, that it has a deep influence in our everyday life. And the satellites that orbit hundreds or thousands of kilometers above our heads they will contribute to our everyday life in very direct ways. <laughs> and the story of the European space industry is a story of success. One of the many things that we can be proud of, that we can use as an encouragement in other industries as well. The European space industry, they produce world-beating products and they provide thousands and thousands of valuable jobs. 
It's an industry worth way more than 50 billion euros. It employs more than 200,000 people. And yet that, of course, only scratches the surface of the importance of the space industry. Because even larger parts of our economy, maybe up to 10%, uses data and services from our systems in space. And Europe's space assets allows us to act in a strategic and autonomous way. You know, of course, this a thousand times better than I do. But we should spread the message so that more people know and appreciate what we have achieved together. That Galileo can guide us efficiently and fast from one place to another. That ECNOS provides a capacity that keeps uh, crews and passengers safe during landing. That Copernicus supports predictions of climates and weather patterns and in emergencies, like the terrible, terrible fires in Australia, it, we can rely on data to show us the identity of those fires and the effect on air quality. And even that is just a hint of the importance that space will have in the decade ahead. Because the technology used in space will play a vital role in bringing new services to people here on ground and to help us fight climate change. To make Europe the first climate neutral continent, and this strategic goal is set for 2050, we'll have to use or make the best use of all the capacities that we have, not just here on the planet, obviously also in space. Copernicus can help us measure pollution transparently and consistently. Galileo and ECNOS can help us cut pollution by showing the most efficient way from going one place to another or helping farmers to cut down on the fertilizers they need or the amount of pesticide to use. This green transition will happen at the same time as the digital transformation. And the two things, of course, poses enormous challenges and great levels of complexity, but also enormous promises. Because technology based in space will help us get the most out of technology that we have on ground. Huge amounts of data coming from Copernicus, well, that will provide the raw material for training artificial intelligence uh, and enable us to create best systems. And Galileo will help us do connected cars and support the Internet of Things. This means that for us in Europe and for the European space industry at large, there is a huge set of opportunity in the decade ahead. And we start from a strong position. And this good news should travel to make Europeans proud of what we do together. These are some of the best uh, satellite makers in the world, capturing more than a third of the world's open markets. We have leading satellite communication companies, thousands of businesses, including startups and small and medium-sized businesses that uses data to provide innovative services here on ground. The Copernicus Academy focuses on research and training to provide the next generation of researchers and entrepreneurs with the best skills. So it is indeed a decade of new and valuable uh, sources. In my work as Executive Vice President, well, part of that is to make sure that it gets the attention and the resources to make it happen. And, as said, part of that is about money. We have to continue to develop and improve Europe's uh, space infrastructure, like Copernicus, like Galileo. 
we hear, we make sure that there is money to support also new ideas and new technologies, Te technologies in space, but also those technologies that make space use of the data produced in space. And that is why it is of enormous importance that the next seven-year budget makes money available, money that we need for investment through programs like Horizon Europe and Invest EU, the Space Program and the Digital Europe Program. And we also need to do all we can to help start up and small and medium-sized businesses throughout Europe to grow and to compete in world markets. Because if you have an excellent service, it's not necessarily the size that uh, decides if you can have a global impact or not. With excellent data, with excellent ambition, and with the support from this community, you can get also a head start in world markets. And we need to build that with the support in which space regulation, as well, of course, as the Copernicus and Galileo programs, offer to smaller businesses. And we need to help those businesses to find the advice and the money to turn great ideas into world-beating products. And brilliant ideas, of course, will have to be able to succeed in the world where they meet their customers so that they can build, build an industrial success in the decades ahead and make new services available that people will appreciate. So we have to support also the level playing field that allows the best ideas to come through, no matter where in Europe they come from, no matter how big the company who invented them. And that means having effective competition in Europe. And it means giving ourselves the tools that we need to make that foreign state ownership and subsidies do not deny European businesses a fair chance to compete on world markets. In all of this work, we need to be on a constant lookout for ways to bring our different policies together to achieve something that is more than the different parts. And that brings me to a second part of the strategic European industry, that of defense. There's a whole lot of ways that we can get more for our money by making links between defense, defense and space industry. Not, of course, by militarizing space, but maybe to recognize that the two industries, well, they share some of the same challenges and some of the needs that they have, well, they may be tackled in similar ways. Emerging technologies are changing our working methods in areas like cyber defense and artificial intelligence. And in this digital age, the same technology increasingly have both military and civilian purposes. We have seen, obviously, how satellite navigation can help armies operate just as well as it enable people to find the fastest route to where they want to go shopping. We have seen all the technologies back in the days originally developed for military purposes, such as lasers or microwaves. Well, they will boost now everyday appliances on Earth as well as in space. Our Galileo public regulated services, well, they provide intelligence that can be used for both civilian and defense authorities. Some of the challenges and threats, well, they are shared too. Like the risk of interference, collusion with space debris, something that will threaten both commercial and military satellites. We can work together between European institutions, national governments, and civil and military operators to make the most of our capabilities. The way that we are doing with the EU satellite uh, communication initiative, the GovSatcom. And we can make sure that the data we collect, well, that we produce better services 
that enhance all of our lives. And, of course, in that respect, make the best of the defense funds to finance space research or capability development. Because there's no such thing as out there. It is right here. It is not something far removed from our daily concerns. It is right here. Space technology is an essential part of our lives. And this is exactly the best argument to ask taxpayers to fund it. This is not something out there. This is critical for our everyday life and for our security. And I think this is important, equally important for each and every one of us. And I hope with all the potential and all the achievements represented in this room, that we can be a common team to achieve this together. To have the funds for the investments needed, to make the best of the data achieved, but also to promote what we have achieved. Because Europeans need to know what we can achieve when we do it together. And I think what you have achieved in the satellite programs, with the specific benefits on this planet, is one of the things that travel so easily between people because of these three basic issues, that space is indefinitely fascinating, that what is in space work here, and everyone knows that if you want to achieve something, you really need to fund it. Thank you.